people ask me questions about acting, the industry, things I've experienced, things I've done related to just acting basically. So I thought I'd do a Q&A answering some of the questions that I've been asked and if you have any other questions I might film another one of these in the future. I, w I would quite like to, it's just kind of hard to collect the questions. So if you have any questions that you would want to ask me or anything that you'd want advice on related to this then please do leave me those questions in the comments. And I will leave timestamps in the description to the different topics that I talk about at different times so if you want to skip to a specific question or you're not interested in certain things that's fine you can just skip through this. And if you want to see any future videos I make like this then please maybe do subscribe because I would really appreciate that and then you get to see the future videos. And let's answer the questions now. So the first question is who am I represented by because I have said that I've got an agent but I've not said who and I've realised actually if you wanted to find out it is on my spotlight so I'm represented by personal talent management. Someone also asked what the name is of the class I went to that has an agency alongside it and it's called the Television Workshop. It's in Nottingham and they also have one in Salford as well but I think now you have to audition to get in. You have to be within like the age range of 9 to 21 I think and you have to be in their weekly group in order to be fully represented by them and I think you also have to live in the kind of postcode areas that they name nearby. What I like about Workshop is I think it's about a third of the people there are on free places and also it's quite an affordable class and it's meant to be quite accessible so I'm not saying that like if you're paying for a class and they've got an agency alongside it it's a scam but you've just got to be careful. Another question was about what is the name of the agency I auditioned for that has a scheme where over the course of a year like you get free classes, free headshots, they pay for your spotlight and like eventually you get represented by them and it's at Bazan Talent Agency, it's their Performer in Progress Award which they run and they have like a winner every year and I think it's such a good scheme, it's nice that it's free. There are a few other agencies that also run auditions so I don't know if that means it's more accessible if you've got less experience. So there's the Young Actors Agency, they run auditions, there's Daisy and Dukes and there's also a few agencies that have branches for less experienced actors where there's more kind of like support related to that so I can link to those kind of things in the description if you're interested in looking into those. Another question was what is the feedback you received from some of the agencies you applied for and I actually now do have an agent so I'm not looking anymore but one of the agencies that got back to me I think they gave me quite a personalised response where they said like we would otherwise like consider talking to you but we actually have someone on our books who's really similar to you so that was kind of like uh, information that shows that like this isn't the agency for you at the moment because we have someone too similar to you so that was kind of good to know. I got feedback when I wasn't on Spotlight that I needed to be on Spotlight. I got advice that maybe it would be good for me to gain more experience and more training before I got an agent which I then did go out and do. I got feedback related to the vocal delivery on one of the scenes I had in my showreel which I was well aware of I think like I just kind of messed it up because it was one of the first short films I did and it just like it was something I needed to work on which I did work on. Another piece of feedback I got from an agency I actually auditioned for in person was that I seem quiet in the room sometimes. I don't know if I just have like a quiet level of focus about me but I seem quite quiet and then they're kind of taken aback by the fact that I come so alive on stage which is interesting to just like reflect on how I come across and how I'm perceived in the audition room and there are things to take on board with that and that's probably not also how I come across in every audition room but that's how I was in that audition room. Another question is what are my kind of go-to audition pieces and the main one that I really love using at the moment and have done for a while is from the play Stuff by Tom Wells and it's Danny's monologue. And I just really love it because it's so funny and like she's actually quite upset though about what she's going through because her parents are not getting on well and she's been told kind of that she should like tell a story and she's kind of feeling the pressure of oh I have to tell this story about what's going on so she's trying to be funny but actually deep down she's quite upset by what's going on. And it's just really interesting because a lot of people bring these really sad emotional monologues to an audition and it is quite a sad kind of piece but like who goes around crying openly all the time? Not really anyone, like we are always trying to cover up how we really feel and I think that's why the monologue's so interesting and I think it sounds quite natural in my voice from what 
I've been told. And audition song wise, I usually end up bringing to singing auditions that I do the song Stupid Cupid because like it's not a musical theatre song, which is a bit rogue because like most of the singing that I do is musical theatre. And as a song, it's just quite fun and out there. So you're not thinking overly too much about the singing element of it because you can really push the story and push the vibe of the song um, more than overthinking the singing. The next question is how do I prepare for a role and I think this depends on the role. I think sometimes I get really nervous about line learning so if it's a short film I will just really work on the lines and try not to prepare too much and have a set idea of what I want it to be because obviously you're acting with another actor so you're meant to be reacting and bouncing off what they're doing so I try not to like overthink and over prepare because then it won't seem a natural reaction to whatever the other actor's doing. In a recent show I did I actually had three different accents to prepare so I did a lot of work mainly on that because you kind of need to and want to get that exact and right and that was a really interesting process to do and I think a lot of the process depends on what kind of piece it is because like if it's historical you might need to do a lot of research into the background and context but I just want to prepare in a way that makes me feel free to react naturally to people because I think you can only find the truth in the moment and once you trust that you'll be able to find that truthful moment from reacting to the other actors and stuff in the moment then that's fine and you just got to trust the process I think. The next question is where do I get my essay work from and are there specific certain websites that you should look out for for this and I've signed up to in my time three different extras agencies I now don't really do this work so much anymore because I have an acting agent but I was signed up to Casting Collective, Selex and Wilkins and you just sign up to extras agencies on their website and then like you'll get sent out availability requests for stuff and like if you're right for it then you can go for it like some of them will want you to have like quite natural hair so if you don't have natural hair then maybe like that won't be the role for you if your hair's like dyed blue. There are so many different extras agencies and it also kind of depends where you're based in the country which one will get you the most work and kind of what shows you want to be doing so I can leave a list to the different extras agencies in the description if people want to check that out and look into it. And finally, what kind of films and TV shows do I like to watch? I think I like to watch a lot of different things. I think it's important to watch not just the stuff that you think you're going to enjoy, but <laughs> watch a variety of different things. I think it's also important I try to watch stuff that has people who are playing characters who are kind of my casting type. I just think it's good to be aware of what's being made in the industry at the moment. I think it's good to ask any acting teachers or actor friends you know for recommendations of other things to watch because I think then that leads you to branch out and watch other things you wouldn't otherwise watch so that's been useful. And recently I've watched A Good Girl's Guide to Murder and I've also watched Totally Completely Fine um, but I think I also need to branch out and watch a wider range of other things and I love watching Spanish films because I think it's just like it's interesting seeing what's made in other countries because sometimes it can be completely different to anything you've ever seen before there's completely different actors involved from the actors that often like tend to crop up in a lot of different things in your country and your language so I think that's always really interesting to do that's the end of the questions please do leave me questions in the comments because actually lots of people in just my general life do ask me questions about the industry and I just think it's interesting to talk about in a video format so if you would like to help me out or you if you would like my help I guess then please do leave questions in the comments and thank you so much for watching bye